my name is Megan Schaefer. I'm the Cultural Resources Coordinator for Summit Metro Parks. And today we're going to be talking about the Big Bend Archaeological Site, which is along the Towpath Trail, which leads you to the northern terminus of the Portage Path. A portage is a strip of land between two waterways that must be crossed in order to avoid some kind of obstacle um, or in order to get from one waterway to another. In this case, the portage is between the Cuyahoga River and the Tuscararas River. The Cuyahoga River is part of the Lake Erie watershed, which takes you from the Cuyahoga, you can go all the way up into Lake Erie and then out into the Atlantic. The Tuscararas is part of the Ohio River watershed, and from the Ohio River you can get to the Mississippi River and then all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. So by crossing the strip of land that exists between the Cuyahoga River and the Tuscararas River, you can go all the way from the top of the continental United States to the southern portion of the continental United States. So this was a very important portage for early peoples to cross in order to use all of the waterways that go from north to south in the United States. So we're here at Big Bend Archaeological Site. This is a large archaeological site that was excavated in the 1990s prior to the construction of the Towpath Trail. At the site were found flint flakes, projectile points, firecracked rock, shell fossils, and pottery fragments. These indicate that the site was probably occupied during the Late Woodland or the Whittlesey period. Late Woodland and Whittlesey tradition are archaeological cultures. That means that those are names that archaeologists have given to those cultures at a later date rather than the names that people would have called themselves. The Whittlesey tradition takes its name from Dr. Charles Whittlesey, who was an amateur archaeologist who did work in the Cuyahoga Valley in the mid-1800s. Big Bend dates to sometime after AD 1000 and before AD 1400. Features on the site included two hearths, one of which contained nutshells and a raspberry seed, and these indicate a midsummer to late fall occupation of the site. Post molds were also found on the site, and there were very small post molds, only about five centimeters in diameter. So these indicate that there were structures on the site. They were probably something like tents or possibly drying racks that people were using for meats or for hides. It looks like this site was occupied by small groups who were living here uh, in the summer months or in the warmer months, and that they were relying more on gathered resources, on naturally available resources, rather than on gardening or horticulture or any kind of uh, small-scale farming. So the Big Bend site fits in a much larger context of occupation sites that are all along the Cuyahoga Valley. The next time you're on the towpath, think about this as a cultural landscape where people have lived for thousands of years.